great film, hilarious, and it's just packed with wonderful comedic actors. And I just have to ask, what are your favorite memories from set or awkward memories from set? Um, well, I, I have to say one of my favorite memories from set was uh, when we shot the scene where we both walk in on uh, Bill Hader's character having sex with Rachel Bilson's character. Our oldest daughter. Because... And he doesn't stop. The way we, we shot in. that, there was... I, for some reason, I really did not have any anticipation of what I was going to be walking in on, at least the first take. So, I thought we'd be seeing someone kind of looking back at us from under a blanket. Yeah. And, and not someone standing there with our daughter straddling right, him. Right, and, and like with a sort of like loosely placed blanket, and then Bill Hader just like going at it and just riffing with the most hilarious improvised lines. All of this... Meanwhile, in front of his actual wife, who is the director and writer of the movie. Howling at the monitor. And we were, that was really quite a moment yeah. for us. It was fun. Fantastic. Um, I think one of, my, one of my favorite parts about the film is uh, kind of the dichotomy between your characters and how they deal with Aubrey's sexual curiosity and her list and... And I just kind of wanted you to talk a little bit about um, your different approaches to dealing with Aubrey. Mrs. Clark? Um, Mrs. Cl Mr. Clark? Judge Clark? <laughs> Judge. Uh, Mrs. Clark is very, very open with, with her and very, uh, and wants for her to have the information that she needs and feels very strongly that it's her responsibility to have her, to impart as much information as she can. This is, you know, I think this is a very feminist point of view that Mrs. Clark has. She, you know, knowledge is power, so she wants her daughter to have all the knowledge that she needs. She's thrilled about the list. She's th Mrs. Clark is a supporter of the list. She would have helped define some of the words if she needed to. Judge Clark has had to endure an older daughter who is full-out tramp and perhaps slight disappointment, though he loves her endlessly, and now to see his valedictorian daughter about to go off to school, very innocent, suddenly decide that she has to cram in apparently 30 years of sex into the seven weeks before she goes away is anything but a good summer for him. I think it can all kind of be brought back to the lube, right? The lube? The lube. Oh, the, the lube, oh yes. Yeah. The root of all evil. Really, I mean, she needed that lube. And I think that we learn a lot about Mrs. Clark in that moment and some of the suffering that she had to endure. Yes, and I think for Judge Clark it becomes one of those classic marriage moments of who the hell are you? Who am I married to that you think you need to provide the lube to our daughter for her sexual experimentation? Um, so this film's set in the 90s, obviously, and there are just some, some great moments about, you know, call waiting, and it just becomes very apparent as a viewer that the 90s, it's now actually a decade of distant past, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, a great source of comedy. Can you kind of talk a little bit about stepping back into that decade and what it was like and favorite, you know, favorite 90s iconic items? Well, unlike for the kids who kind of play the kids in this movie, we remember it. Yeah, well, this was actually... Me more than you. You were quite young. No, but I still remember. Uh, <laughs> cell phones, <laughs> internet. You can't believe that stuff wasn't around. It's kind of weird to, to kind of see that stuff. And, and you realize how much all that stuff has changed the world. Yeah, and, and I think there was, a certain, um, there was a certain innocence about us at that time because we didn't have access to everything the way we do now in the yeah. 90s. And so... Um, when Brandy talks about her notebook, she doesn't mean a computer. Right. It's really her notebook she that really she's written all this down. Keeper. It's very analog. <laughs> it's very analog sex, and yet still pretty raunchy. Yeah. And it's good, good sex. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I feel like our sex gets better as a result. Yeah. No, right. you're high talking me. I don't know what you're talking about. Because you kind of make me realize what well, I have to come to grips with the fact that you weren't a virgin on oh, our right. wedding night. I know, but then you. And then you take me out to make out point and really kind of like make it up to me in right. a way I think that hark in my fantasy harkens in a new exciting era of sexuality in our marriage. And that is the spinoff. <laughs> Apparently, in your version, not so much. Okay. Um, one last question: uh, Why should people go see the to-do list? It's the dirtiest funny movie this summer. Ooh, nice. I like that. It's the funniest dirty movie this summer. It's the funniest dirty movie this summer. And it's about chicks. No. 
know. <laughs> I was going to say it's a chick flick, but I don't think that's it. I don't think it's a chick flick because it's, I think everybody can relate to this movie because everybody can relate to the idea of having sex for the first time. I agree with you. If you, if you, if you love those movies, the sexual coming of age movies that we've gone to see in the summertime yeah. in movie theaters, kind of since I was a kid, you're going to love this one. And also, especially I think for the girls, they get to see the main character not be a boy kind of chasing and objectifying young bimbos. If this is a girl chasing and objectifying and using and rejecting young himbos. <laughs> I think I just coined that. Wow. I, I think I've heard that before. <laughs> yes. 